the different cards that aren't as expensive, you'll be able to see opportunities that provide lower risk because you're just not spending as much or over leveraging yourself on a certain card. Welcome back everyone to this week in sports cards volume 14. We have more sports card content on your way for this week. Before getting into the video, go over to slabstocks.com backslash slabstocks to pre-register for the slab stocks platform that we are working very very hard to bring to you to launch to you to let you use for absolutely free to track your investments to track the different investments out there in the industry and see what's going on at real time speed we are very excited to bring it to you so be sure to pre-register so you do not miss out on the new info that we will be sending out soon in terms of this week and what we're looking at with the different sports cards i wrote an article this dates back now two weeks that covered the LeBron $1.8 million sale and what it means for the hobby today and going forward. There's a lot of information packed in here, um, a lot of different reasonings for why the sports car industry is hot and will remain hot and why this LeBron sale validated all the recent market increases. So please go over to slabstocks.com slash blog to read about this article. And then you can see where my reasoning comes from and hear my words uh, that I wrote down. As for the cards for this week that we are seeing in the trenders, uh, we have two different sports to cover. We have baseball and basketball. Of course, baseball has now played, you know, six, six-ish games or so. Um, depending on the team, of course, we're having a lot of positive COVID tests, which is really going to impact the baseball season. What's going to happen? We don't really don't know. Um, the last I heard is that the MLB was telling their uh, TV providers to pre-plan all their programming uh, just in case the season gets canceled and doesn't go on so or suspended. So there's a lot that's going on and you know, kind of some scary things in terms of baseball and the long-term outlook for this season. But we really just don't know what's going on, just kind of like how we didn't know what was going on going into the season. I think that the MLB is doing a really bad job of communication, of making sure that protocols are set up right, uh, just not going very well. To get into those MLB cards, though, we'll do that first, and then we'll move on to the NBA, which has been a very, very exciting start to the bubble. Um, it's, I'm recording this on a Saturday, so I have seen all of Thursday and Friday's action, none of Saturday or Sunday's yet, so be sure to tune into that. That'll be great. But as for these baseball cards, the first one that we're breaking down is the 2016 Kyle Lewis Bowman Chrome First Bowman Auto BGS 9.510 Gem Mint. This card has absolutely exploded in price. If you listen to Nate and I's Dinging Corners episode from Thursday, you would already know about this card and the increase. I quoted it in the video, 193% increase from the start of July until July 29th. Um, pretty crazy trend here. This is both eBay auction and buy it now sales. Kyle Lewis had an amazing start to the season. He's 25 years old rookie. He had some really bad knee issues, which made him miss some time in the minors. He's a first-round pick. Nate covered it all in the Dinging Corners episode. Gave his outlook on Kyle Lewis for investing in him. So be sure to go watch Thursday's Dinging Corners episode to hear Nate's take on all of this. I will reiterate one of the main points that Nate had about Kyle Lewis is that there's a lot of risk factor that comes with buying into someone this high now, especially with these Bowman Chrome Autos, which are more expensive. But if you're looking to get into Kyle Lewis, maybe go and look for other cards of Kyle Lewis. You can go look for his tops 2020 Series 1 rookie or the gold or the gold foil or different cards from different tops releases that are cheaper that lets you acquire them for lower risk. Um, one thing that I really, really like about sports cards is that there are so many high end cards of certain players. LeBron, Kawhi, Kobe, Giannis, all these players have very high end cards, but they also have cards that are not as expensive. And when you look at the different cards that aren't as expensive, you'll be able to see opportunities that provide lower risk because you're just not spending as much or over leveraging yourself on a certain card. You can go and look for Giannis and look for 2018 Select Silvers or 2019 Optic Hollows, which are $25 to $40. And then you can also go and buy $5,000 Prism PSA 10 rookies, which of course is like the ultimate rookie card for Giannis. But at the same time, you can go if you have a lower budget and go and find these other cards that are cheaper. You don't always have to put up as much risk as you can with a certain player you believe in. Just find different spots to enter into the hobby, into different players. Um, there's always an entry point for every single player. There always is. 
no matter the budget. It doesn't matter if it's a rookie card. Second year, third year, fourth year, even 15th year LeBron cards are selling really well. So there's always some way to get into a certain player. And honestly, I think that's the theme of this video is that you can get into any players with any budget. It doesn't matter what the card is. I mean, it does matter what the card is. Let me say that. It doesn't matter if it's a $1,000 plus card though, but you do want to make sure you're still buying you know, the Prism Select Optic National Treasures, those different high-end lines where people love the brand because those are the ones that really do well into the future. That is pretty much how I'm going to base this Kyle Lewis discussion. Kind of funny that we start off talking about Kyle Lewis's hot start in baseball and now we're moving into different low-budget cards you can buy of star players, but you know sometimes that's how it goes. Next card we're going to look at here is the Mookie Betts 2014 Tops Update Rookie PSA 10. This card has been doing super well in July um, for some reason. If you follow Gary Vaynerchuk on Instagram, Gary V, as most of you know him, he uh, posted some pictures about his Mookie Betts rookie card he was holding. And around that time is when you see the massive spike, over $400 on auction. Then Mookie signed a long-term extension with the Dodgers um, 10 years about, I want to say. It was at like $35 million a year. Those are not the exact numbers, but they're pretty close. And you see another spike there from 425 up to over 600. Now it's went down a bit in value. However, this chart was produced before his game last night, which would have been Friday night, where he had a home run and he had an absolutely dynamite throw from right field to third base. It was amazing. If you haven't seen it, Twitter search or Google search Mookie Betts throw, and it'll for sure be the first video that comes up. Really, really, really cool throw that Mookie Betts had from right field to third base to get, uh, what's his name, what's his name? Someone out who was stretching for a triple. Cannot remember, oh, Kettle Marte. That's who he got out. It was, it was really, really awesome. Now, in terms of this card and where it looks going forward, there is definitely some, I guess, a little bit more concern with it because of the really high increase. Now, 225 for Mookie Betts, PSA 10, who just landed on the Dodgers, one of the best teams in the MLB. Great long-term outlook on the team. It didn't really make much sense that they were so cheap. Of course, he's done the long-term extension now, which is helping too. But now it, they're more expensive. But comparing to other players in MLB, Mookie Betts had an amazing year for the Red Sox a couple years ago. And then a couple of down years. So I think that there is some inconsistency that people are staying away from. However, in general, Mookie Betts should see good value increases going forward with when he is you know, getting into the playoffs and actually making a wave with the Dodgers. Um, it'll be interesting to see. I think that there's still room in these. However, I will say this. I think that the Topps Chrome Update Rookie PSA 10 now are very undervalued compared to this Topps Update PSA 10 because of the the demand to the one card because of some social media influence. Um, definitely look for other Mookie cards that maybe are better buys today than this Paper Update PSA 10. Moving on to a couple of basketball cards. The first one we are going to talk about he had a big game in his debut for the NBA restarts, the Kawhi Leonard 2012 Prism Base PSA 10. He looked super smooth on the court against the Lakers. Of course, the Clippers lost. A really, really good game. It was an amazing game to watch. But this Kawhi has been getting massive respect here in July, going from $2,000 up to $3,750. And now they're selling at $4,000 as of today. And there's clearly a ton of demand coming to Kawhi with expectations of an amazing NBA restart. RA had a great game one. Will he have multiple games going forward where he proves the same? Probably. This card will get very, very interesting if they are to make the NBA Finals and win. That means that they'll have to have gone through probably the Lakers and then probably the Bucks, who are the two best teams in terms of record, and probably the two best teams in, you know, in terms of how they've been playing so far this season. Now, there's so much that can go into this and so much that can happen. If they win the Finals, would not be surprised if this card doubles. Um, many people commenting on the post thought the same. There's a lot of potential in these 2012 Prism cards, especially Anthony Davis as well, if the finals go well for these guys, and they might. So there is risk factor, like I was talking about, because it's expensive. However, so much payoff if you have the money to invest, if you have that $4,000 to turn to eight k maybe. I mean, who knows? If they do very well, probably. If they don't, then probably not, obviously. So there's a lot of different things going into it. You just have to assess your risk and understand you know, what the outcomes can be and is it worth it for you. Moving on to the next day, we have the Zion Williamson 2019 Prism Silver PSA 10. These are super, super tough grades. They are 37% PSA 10 rate. There's 721 PSA 10s out there, uh, you know, out of a total of somewhere between 
2,500 or something, I guess whatever 37% is. So 721 PSA 10s out there for the silvers. Very, very rare, very, very tough grades. Clearly the hype is real with Zion from June to the end of July. They increased around, you know, $2,000, $1,500 in value. Much There's not much to say about this card because it's been in the spotlight all season. You know, as Zion keeps on playing well, probably will keep on going up in value. Another thing is that I couldn't believe watching the game the other day that Zion sat out the last, you know, seven minutes of the game. Like, yeah, he was on leave for a family emergency. No, he didn't get hurt when he was out there. So I don't really understand if his conditioning was still pretty, you know, pretty decent, why he didn't play more than 13 or 15 minutes. It wasn't like he just came off his torn meniscus like he did back in the fall slash winter when he made his debut. Doesn't really make any sense to me. Very frustrating for a lot of Pelicans fans, NBA fans, probably the Pelicans players, you know, Zion for sure, different card investors, a lot of frustration level. Um, Hopefully today on Saturday they are playing the Clippers. We see more Zion and we see over 20 minutes. That'd be really, really awesome. And then, of course, Zion, super efficient. He, like, missed one shot, 15, 13 or 15 points in 13 minutes, I think. Um, Pretty crazy game for Zion, like always. That was this week in Sports Cards Volume 14. Uh, Lots of different things to cover. Definitely some different strategical plays and looking for star players that have cheaper cards from the main brands. Doesn't have to be rookie cards. Don't always look at Kawhi and say, if it's not a 2012 card, his rookie card, it's not worth buying. Definitely not true. Same with LeBron and Giannis. And then guys like Damian Lillard and Russell Westbrook. I mean, you might like Russell, you might not. But Other guys like them in the hobby can definitely be found for cheap for their non-rookie cards. So do some research. Go out there and search for some non-rookie cards of NBA star players. We will definitely touch on that subject more in the coming weeks. I'm going to have one of my friends in the hobby join me on here. He goes by Brock's Cards on Instagram. Go check him out. He's going to be joining the YouTube show to break down non-rookie cards. So we'll have plenty to talk about on that show. We will save the rest of the discussion for then. As for this video, thank you for watching uh, this. You know the breakdown of the sports card for this week. It's always fun hopping on here and breaking down the different investments and why they're doing what they're doing. And hopefully you guys can apply what happened to these investments and go apply that to other investments in the sports card market. Don't just look at this and say, oh, this card's hot. I should go buy it. Look at it and say, why did it go up in value? What made it happen? Should I stay away from it? How can I apply this to other cards in the sports card industry? And you'll do very, very well. Thank you all for watching. I will see you guys next Sunday.